Hi, I'm Harley. I'm the communications assistant at Reuse Hawaii. We're an environmental nonprofit and we focus on deconstruction and redistribution. So, what we do is when someone wants to take down their house or building, um, instead of demolishing it and having all of that waste go to the landfill, they can hire our team to deconstruct it and set instead. So what deconstruction is, is disassembling a building by hand, piece by piece, in the reverse order that it was built. Um, so through this method, we're able to salvage up to 80% of the building, and this is where we keep it. How long does it take you to disassemble? So there is a lot of factors that go into it. It depends on um, obviously the size of the house, the condition of the house, and then the number of team members we have at that time. Um, but we can sometimes in a matter of days and sometimes it's a matter of weeks so it just depends on the project um, but once the building is deconstructed it comes back to our redistribution redistribution center and um, the wood is denailed in our processing center which i'll give you a tour of later we have a special tool called a denailer so it um, pumps the nail out of the wood so that the wood can then be reused um, and all of our items at our redistribution center are sold for anywhere from 40 to 90 percent off retail value. So this is an example of how the circular economy not only has environmental benefits but social benefits as well. So this is our lumber yard. We have various types of wood. Um, we have flooring over here um, and it's just amazing to see what people can create. I think a lot of times people think of second hand as being lesser value but in reality, we've seen some beautiful things created that are of even higher value than maybe it was originally. I've seen that on your social media, like you had people reusing the wood, beautiful Hawaiian wood into ukuleles or yes. furniture or lots of artists seem very excited about reusing you guys' materials, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm just always amazed at how creative our supporters are and all the things that they come up with. Um, yeah, there's so many examples as you can see on our Instagram page, Reuse Hawaii, but we've had people create just beautiful tables. Um, we even have a workshop, so we have people here who make their own creations too. Um, on your social media to see how, like when restaurants use your materials, they tag you guys, so they are also using the reuse of materials as part of their branding. Yeah, exactly, and it's awesome. It just you know, creates a community around sustainability and just sort of spreading the idea that like we can make this work, we can make it make a sustainable lifestyle. Um, so this is our processing center. All this lumber in the back hasn't been denailed yet. So we have a team, they're not here today, but we have a team that will take all the nails out of it and um, cut it so that we can resell it in uh, like a nice form for people to use. Um, and then I'll show you through here. We've had people tell us it reminds them of Monsters, Inc. Um, so I'll take you back to our workshop. Um, we have two in-house craftsmen who, they take commissions if people have things that they want to have built through our salvaged wood. They're just really innovative. The things that they come up with always amazes me. Wood, they get all the wood that nobody else wants and then they create something amazing out of it. Um, they also help us with community partnerships. So we do, I don't know if you've seen them around Oahu, but we have shaded top and they're in the street where normally like a parked car would be um, outside of a restaurant. So it creates like a community space for people to eat or hang out or whatever um, and all of that wood is salvaged. So awesome. reuse helped with that. So Honolulu Tool Library is um, a separate organization. We do partner with them on a lot of things but um, and they're housed inside of our warehouse and they're another great example of building the circular economy through a sharing service because we don't all need to own our own drill or our own hammer if you're only going to use it a few times. Um, so yeah, we're really proud to be able to work with them. Um, so we get donations of solar panels and then people will, you know, will redistribute them to the community. I think all of our solar panel, pan sorry, solar panels are $60. Wow. Yeah, so pretty affordable. 
So in addition to our deconstruction projects, which obviously feed our redistribution center, we also get in community donations. So any community members say you have an old couch that you no longer want, you can bring it down to us and if we have the space for it in our warehouse and if it is sort of up to our standards, we'll take it in. We try to take in as much as we can because obviously we don't want to go into the landfill. Um, so it will come over here to our donation center. This. Um, and all the donations that we receive, either through community members or through our deconstruction projects, we weigh them all and we keep track of this weight um, throughout the year. And it's really impressive to see like what, how much we're able to save from going into the landfill. In fiscal year 2021, we were able to divert 462 tons of resources from the landfill. Sorry, this is equal to the weight of two and a half blue whales. Yeah, wow. which is sort of our boutique area. We like to keep our vintage, maybe more high quality items here to display. Um, and these benches were all made by, made in the workshop from Reclaimed Wood. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So we also have a workforce development program, you know, community volunteers or people looking to get trained in the sustainability sector can work with us and they can be trained in deconstruction, um, at the workshop, in woodworking, and then customer service and even managing nonprofit. So this is the Honolulu Tool Library. So like I said, they're a separate organization from us, but we partner with them a lot. Um, so you just can pay for a membership and then you can come borrow tools and you can even look up ahead of time to make sure that they have the tools that you need. So these are tree slabs from our local tree reclamation program. Um, those are monkey pod and Norfolk pine. Um, and what our local tree reclamation program is, is whenever a tree needs to be removed either for safety reasons, conservation reasons, or development reasons, um, and it's going to be taken down, it usually is sent to either the chipper or the landfill. And we saw this as sort of an inconsistency in building the circular economy. So we developed this program where um, locally felled trees can be donated to us and then um, we mill them into two inch slabs for the community to use. And these have been really popular. People love them. They're you know, so beautiful. People create live edge shelves, benches, tables, um, pretty much anything. And what's great about any of our donations is they all come with a tax deductible receipt. So if you hire us for a deconstruction project, if you donate your couch to us, donate a locally felled tree to us, all of this comes with a tax deductible receipt. Um, and we have had people like build an entire house out of reclaimed materials. Not all of it was from us, um, but they were able to build an entire house out of salvaged materials, which is pretty amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. And then we also do deconstruction projects on all islands. So we have a free deconstruction inquiry form. Um, and whenever we do deconstruction projects on other islands, we try to hire team members from those islands to help us with those projects. And then we try to redistribute the materials to the community on that island. Um, if we're not able to redistribute all of it, then we ship it back to our warehouse and sell it here. Um, but in 2020, we deconstructed the Princeville Resort on Kauai, um, which was a huge project and turned out really amazing. Everyone loved the materials that came from that. Deconstruction is, you know, it's, it's sad to see those places go. I know a lot of people were um, disappointed to see why Lana Coffee House closed down. But, um, you know, it's amazing that its legacy is able to live on through the material that we salvaged. Um, and this goes the same for lumber too because a lot of the lumber that we salvage is from old growth forests that you know we'll never be able to get that type of lumber again because it's just from such old trees. The same thing goes for our ohia. Um, I'm not sure if you or your audience is aware but um, rapid ohia death is a disease that's spreading through our ohia trees which are endemic to Hawaii. Um, so it would be extremely unethical to harvest ohia now. Um, but one of our deconstruction projects contained ohia from the 1950s before this disease was ever a thing. So by salvaging that ohia, people can now ethically use it 
um, whereas you know we might not be able to ever do that again. That's awesome. Yeah. We do. So we get um, grants from the state and from the city. Um, we're not lobbyists, so we don't like lobby for certain political action. But we do get grants from the state and the city. Nice. Yeah. Awesome to see. Yeah, that's what's really great about the sustainability community on Oahu is it's so collaborative. I know for Earth Month we had over over five different partnerships for that just that month alone, which was really awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So we recently did an educational tour with the University of Hawaii. We had a sustainability class come down and we showed them around the warehouse and talked story about the circular economy. Um, and a few months ago I went and visited a second grade class just to talk to them about sustainability, which was really fun and it's awesome that you know, there's such a variety of ages that are interested in this and I think it's important to just spread awareness and spread interest in this. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I love working at Reuse Hawaii because we're all focused on our mission, reducing waste on Oahu, and we all share the same goals just to better the organization in achieving this mission. Um, and it's, you know, not only focused on the environmental benefit, but the community benefit and the social benefit as well. Um, okay, so the circular economy is the opposite of what we're operating in currently. We currently operate in a linear economy where resources are taken, they're produced into a product, we use this product for a short period of time, and then it's thrown away into the landfill. Um, this obviously creates a huge waste problem. Um, on Oahu alone, we generate two million tons of waste a year. Um, so the circular economy is changing this narrative where yeah. concepts of keeping products and materials in use, um, which we do here through our redis redistribution center, um, designing out waste and pollution, and regenerating natural systems. So by practicing these three concepts, we can create a more sustainable world and um, better communities. Um, it's also important to note that the ideas of the circular economy aren't new. All indigenous cultures traditionally practice their lifestyles in this way, and the Ahupu'a system in Hawaii is a great example of that. So everything we use has embodied energy, and embodied energy is all of the energy that it took to, so for example, for lumber, all the energy that it took to grow the tree and then to cut down the tree, not only the emissions, but also the human labor, and then the emissions included in shipping the product, packaging the product, and then selling the product. And also all of the emissions that come when the product is then sitting in the landfill biodegrading or deteriorating, because not every product is biodegradable. <laughs> Um, so when we're reusing products, not only are we saving this product from becoming waste, but we're also reducing all of the emissions that would have been created if we would have made a new product. So in June alone, we calculated that reuse saved an estimated seven tons of greenhouse gases from being emitted into the atmosphere. And this is equal to one passenger flying from Honolulu to New York City twice. Yeah, so we recently launched an online store. Um, it's sort of just a sneak peek of the products we have. Um, there's no way we could include our entire warehouse online. But if you want to take a look, um, we have select products of pretty much every category on there. Uh, we currently don't offer shipping services, so it's pickup only. But if you see an item you love, you can buy it online before someone else gets to it. Um, so when we receive an item, we have a very experienced team that prices it. And what they do is they, if it's an item that we maybe haven't gotten before or whatever, they'll look up the brand, the type of item, and then factor in the condition of it. And they just do a wide search of all the different prices. Um, and then we'll usually, we'll take the lowest price that they find and then discount that 40 to 90% depending on the condition of the item and depending on the demand that we have for it. Um, so then it goes out to the sales floor and if we have, um, we have different colored tags for each month and so every other month each tag will go down 25%. So if an item is here for a long time, it could be eventually discounted up to 75% off the original price, which was already discounted 40 to 90% off. So as you can see, our items can be really affordable. So if we get an item in that 
We don't, isn't really up to our standards quality wise, um, but we don't want to throw it away. We'll put it in the free section and I know people love this. They're usually able to find some things and create something new. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay in touch with us over social media. We're on Instagram at Reuse Hawaii. Um, the most important thing that you can do to fight climate change is talk about it. Talking about the problems that we're facing will lead to action and we need everybody on board to make a difference. Okay. Yeah, thank you.